I'm Ashley, the Alaska Urban Hippie, and today we're making ground meat jerky. So I'm going to be turning this and this into da -da -da -da, a final dehydrated product. So for this project, here is all of my starting equipment. I have a meat grinder, different cuts of meat pulled out. This is Eisenhart. These are venison roasts. And I do have some already ground hamburger meat. Seasoning, cutting board, I've got a dehydrator. Let's get started. So before we get too far along, I want to give a huge shout out to one of our very dearest best friends, Chuck, who is just graduating from RT school. We made him a batch of moose jerky. Let me just say it is delicious and we've been tempted many times to so just eat it and not tell you. If you don't have a grinder and you just want to avoid this part altogether, uh, you could totally just buy already ground meat and you wouldn't have to do this. I'm trying to use up some of the older meat from our freezer. And so this is a venison roast. I'm also going to be adding in some bison heart and some ground beef. So this is a, a mixed meat assortment jerky. I want to make sure that all the pieces of meat are going to fit through our grinder. So I'm making ground meat jerky, which means that you grind up all the meat first, you mix in your, your cure and your seasoning, and then you pump it into a jerky gun and like you squeeze it out onto the trays of a dehydrator. If you're curious about what equipment I'm using, I'll put a link to everything in the description below if you wanted to find it online. Once you have everything set up, running a grinder is pretty easy. We're going to plug in the grinder, get your meat catcher bowl, and I'm going to turn it on and let it start running. It's a little bit loud, but not too bad. And everyone's familiar with it now, right? It just looks like hamburger, like something you'd buy from the store. That's why it's always in those uh, little tubes. It's because it came out of a grinder. But this is venison roast, and so now I'm gonna go and do the bison heart, and then I'll dump in the ground beef, and then I will mix everything together by hand. Now I have my fully ground meat, and I need to figure out exactly how much of the seasoning I need to add to it. I'm doing a mandarin teriyaki. I've portioned out my seasoning, and now you just gotta get in there good. Mix it all up. On my YouTube channel, I try to be extremely transparent that I'm not a pro in most of the things I'm doing. I'm just someone who has done a lot of research, and I've stumbled through on my own, but there are absolutely multiple ways uh, to get to get the same job done. I'm sure there are jerky pros out there who have found shortcuts or more efficient ways to do things. And if that describes you, please, absolutely, leave a comment under the video and help us all out. So now I'm gonna grab my water and add our water in here so that we can get the meat to a texture where it would slide well through our jerky gun. There's three. I need three cups of water for that amount of meat. Ooh, wow, the meat and the seasoning is really soaking that up. And keep in mind, this is going in a dehydrator, and so you're not diluting the flavor of your meat at all, because all this water is gonna be dehydrated back out and evaporated. But if it's not mushy enough, then it won't slide through the jerky gun. Beautiful, look at that. By the time I finished grounding the meat and mixing in all the seasonings, I looked at the clock and it was like late afternoon. And the last time I did a dehydrated ground meat jerky run, it took about five, six hours to dehydrate. So anyway, it's the next day now. I put it in the fridge just to hit pause on the project. And now I'm gonna show you how to fill your, uh, your jerky blaster. See, jerky blaster, it's a real thing. <laughs> This is an empty tube. So you're gonna be filling this whole barrel with the ground meat mixture. 
They do say that you want to pack it in pretty well so that you don't end up with air bubbles as you're trying to push out uh, jerky from this barrel. Now that this is full, I'm going to swap the funnel attachment for the jerky attachment. I have all my trays here laid out for the dehydrator. I'm just going to start by making strips. When I'm doing this, my strips aren't perfect. I'm just trying to use up as much space on the dehydration trays as possible. I'm going to do a funky one. I'm going to do a circle. <laughs> you just want to make sure you're leaving enough space in between strips so that the dehydrator can do its job. You can really make whatever shape you want. Now that all of my trays are full, it's time to put the top on and plug it in. The dehydration process is going to really vary in time. About every hour I'm going to come in here and I'm going to rotate around the trays. Once all the meat is pretty dry but not quite rock hard, that's when I'm going to pull it off. We're three hours in and this is what it looks like. I've rotated these trays a few times. So you can see. It ended up taking six hours, but now this batch of jerky is done. I made some funky shapes. <laughs> now that's how to make homemade ground meat jerky using whatever kind of meat you want. Thanks for watching.